Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be working on my 1997 Honda Civic hatchback. And if you guys haven't seen the previous video on this car, I'd really recommend checking it out and I'll make sure to leave a link above. Now where we left off with this car is that we were actually installing the new seats. So we just put a set of Corbo A4 reclinable seats and I still have yet to take this thing to a racing event. But luckily next week we're actually going to be attending an autocross event with the Biohazard Civic. But before we do that, I actually wanted to take some time to do an installation of a new steering wheel because you guys are gonna have to trust me on this one and I'll show you guys here in a sec. The condition of this steering wheel is absolutely terrible. It feels like you're grasping onto a wet pool noodle and when you twist, it actually doesn't even hold on with the steering wheel because I'm pretty sure the full lamination is completely gone on this one which is uh, unfortunate if you wanted to keep an OEM look, but since uh, this is becoming a little bit more of a performance-oriented car, this may be a good opportunity for us to upgrade. So I went with a Momo Monte Carlo 350 millimeter steering wheel with an NRG quick release hub, but most importantly, the NRG quick lock, which is gonna be the focal point for today's video. So once we go inside, I'll give you a quick breakdown of all the products that we're gonna be putting on the car today as well as the installation process, and then be able to showcase you guys the transformation with this one, which I'm really excited about. And before we get into the video, I do wanna give a huge shout out to 425 Motorsports for giving me the opportunity to be able to do this installation in their shop, as well as NRG Innovations for being able to sponsor today's video and giving us the opportunity to try out their products on the Biohazard Civic. So with that being said, I do think that you guys should check out 425 Motorsports YouTube channel and I'll make sure to link that below in the description if you guys wanna go check that out. But with that being said, let's go see what we got here today and we'll take it from there. Okay, so we're in the shop right now and uh, actually what's going on with the E30 in the back is they're uh, building that out for Pro 3 racing. It's like an E30 spec uh, race that's going on. But when it comes to the breakdown of the steering wheel installation that we have for today, this is the Momo Monte Carlo. Uh, you can get these in Alcantara or leather, but in this case, we're actually gonna be going with leather because the one thing that happens with suede, especially if you're gonna use this as a daily driver, you're gonna run into the issue of leaving wear marks and stains all over it. And it just takes a little bit more upkeep and it's like a total preference thing. So in this case, I went with the 350 millimeter steering wheel because if I go any smaller, you also have to remember too that this car has no power steering. So the smaller steering wheel that you get in terms of an aftermarket wheel, the harder it is it's gonna be to turn. So I think stock size, uh, when I measured it out, it was around like 365 millimeters, almost you know teetering on the side of like 370. So I feel like 350 is gonna be a nice compromise and be able to easily bolt this up. And uh, for those that don't know too, this uh, Momo Monte Carlo is a very a popular wheel, especially in the Honda community, because it almost looks like a replica of what you would get from a, a Mugen or Spoon wheel. Uh, it's almost like the very similar design, and it's just a classic look, and I think it's just gonna really add to the whole driving experience, especially aesthetics-wise with the Honda. Now, this does come with the uh, red Momo horn. You can always uh, swap this out for anything else if you're interested in that. Now, when we move over here, this is actually gonna be what's really important for anybody that's gonna be doing a quick release installation. Now, this is what they call the short hub. So this is gonna be the adapter that's not gonna be universal with every other vehicle out there. So this is the quick release itself, and this is actually the most universal part out of all of this. This is gonna be the more plug and play aspect of all this stuff. So this is what's actually gonna be, gonna be going on to the steering wheel itself. What you wanna focus on here is making sure that you get the correct short hub. But the star for today's show is actually going to be the NRG Quick Lock. Now the Quick Lock is gonna be an anti-theft device. And what's cool about this one and from other uh, anti-theft devices on the market that are designed to protect your steering wheel, especially with a quick release setup, is the fact that this, when you lock it up, it just spins freely like this. So nobody could take a vice grip, for example, and try and run off with your car because all that's gonna happen is this is just gonna turn endlessly. They won't be able to turn the wheel. So that's the huge aspect and upgrade of being able to showcase something like this on the car. In terms of installation, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to focus on uh, disconnecting the battery. And what I think I'll do here is I'll spend some time and I'll start mocking up how this is going to connect to the steering wheel and make sure that we have all the hardware in the correct places when we install this. 
And then the, the biggest fight really is just gonna be removing the old steering wheel that's currently in the car. And I'll give you guys a quick demonstration right here in a sec of what it looks like when you're driving this thing. Now, when you look at it aesthetically, it looks totally fine. It's a little bit worn here and there, but granted, this is such an old car, that's not a big deal. But, but just watch when I grip the wheel. Steering wheel is not supposed to do that. <laughs> you see that? It's really terrible. So just think about this, you know, daily driving, it's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's okay, it's not great. But when you're on the track and you're gripping the wheel and it feels like there's a lack of a sense of confidence in being able to hold on, uh, along with that with the stock seats, it was actually pretty terrifying for what it is. So I'm really hoping that once we take this out that this will be a tremendous upgrade in terms of being able to showcase all this stuff to you guys because it just, it just feels slimy. It's, it's not a very good wheel overall. So hopefully this will uh, at least upgrade the interior aesthetics, but most importantly, give us the performance aspects when we take this to the track. And another thing that I wanted to point out too that I noticed when, uh, when I was out here looking at this is that I actually had to calibrate this to align correctly. So there's like a dot right here at the top center and you wanna make sure that you use an Allen key right here to make the adjustment to make sure that this is on point. You don't want this to back out for any reason because this is what's holding your steering wheel and essentially one of the most important aspects of all this stuff. I'm gonna pop open the hood here in a sec and we'll uh, let the battery drain for a sec. Then I'll get started with taking out the wheel. And today I don't have Ray or James or Harrison out here and they're usually filming with me. So I'm kind of on my Sam Sulek vibes if you know what I mean. You can uh, disconnect this, let it drain out, you know. Some people immediately will just start working on it. I'll probably give it a few minutes here and then we'll uh, at least attack putting the aftermarket wheel together and then we can do the, the fun stuff with taking out the old one. And when you're taking out a 25 year old wheel, it might be a little bit of a struggle. It might get stuck, but we can just hope for the best here. Once we take the airbag out, I'll show you guys something that is worth mentioning as well. On the horn, I was actually a little bit confused and I wasn't sure how this is all orientated. So what you're actually gonna use is you're gonna use the universal ring that holds this into place on the back, so this silver portion. And then you're gonna wanna hook these up and what they provide you is a female to female connector when it comes to the hookup on the universal hub. So you wanna make sure that these are in the correct orientation. This was just something that you might have to troubleshoot. This wire is pretty long. I don't know if we're gonna need to snip this off and maybe reconnect it here with some electrical tape, but you really wanna make sure that none of this grounds because it might just sound off your horn a whole bunch. So we'll probably wrap this in a whole bunch of electrical tape here once we do this installation. So there's these little tabs on the side. I want to take off. Now this will give you sight into the T30 Torx that you're going to want to take off right here. So this is what you're going to need. You're going to need a T30 Torx. I put it into this universal socket. Nice and easy. Okay, now that we have the bolts out, what you can do is you can take the airbag out and you're just going to want to unplug these. Okay, so we got our 19 millimeter with a breaker bar. And we just get a hook that this doesn't get us too much trouble. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on taking out the SRS system. I think if you wanna get rid of the uh, airbag light, there's a couple ways you can go about it. I think uh, running a resistor wire is probably gonna be the easiest way. I haven't looked into it too much, so I would kind of see maybe if somebody in the comments can confirm here, but at least I know on old Subarus, you should be able to do that, you know, in this instance, but we'll take this out. This should just kind of pop out like so, and then we'll follow the wire to see where it goes. And then you should be able to remove this completely. The fun stuff. Okay, so I got the short hub on here. So now we're gonna take the original nut that we had on here, we'll start threading it on. We'll make sure we'll get it on there nice and snug and then the rest should be, uh, should go pretty quickly. Okay, so we have the hub connected. So this is the majority of the aspect of what it's gonna look like for now. I hooked up the rest of the screws that go into here for the plastic shrouding. So 
we're pretty much set there. Now, my biggest task is going to be putting together the horn. Now, for whatever reason, this wire seems to be just a little bit too long. So I may need to fiddle around with this a little bit. And uh, I think the way that this is gonna work is this silver portion is like a universal piece. And this is the part that actually came with the Momo wheel, but it doesn't uh, fit correctly. So I'm gonna try and use this universal piece. And I think the way that it's gonna work is you put this ring around the horn. And since it's metallic, it makes contact here and it should give you power to the horn, or at least in theory it will. So I'm gonna try my best here to, to put this all together. What you really wanna make sure that you do when you put the horn on is you make sure that you center it with the top or else it's gonna be crooked when you keep it on the wheel. So I tried my best to keep it as centered as possible. So now this is a step where we're gonna take this and now install this onto here and then we should be pretty good. And of course my camera died. Okay, so I'm back here and I just spent some time and I put everything back together on the car and I just wanted to show you guys real quick what the final installation looks like and it looks absolutely amazing. I am so happy with the way this turned out and I'm super stoked to take this to the track. I mean, the seats, the floor mats, the shifter, the steering wheel, this is like a dream come true for me at least. I, I don't even know what to say. I'm very excited about this one. I, I do think that there was a little bit of hesitation happening with the quick release itself, but I think just from uh, giving it some exercise by detaching it and attaching it multiple times, it's going in a lot smoother in and out. So what I wanna do now is I wanna showcase to you guys the full driving experience with the steering wheel on, as well as demonstrate to you guys how to use the most important product in today's video, the NRG Quick Lock. But I hope this helps somebody out there that's looking to put an aftermarket steering wheel in their car. This was a pretty straightforward and easy install. Steering wheel didn't give me any huge trouble or headache or anything like that. It's just very unfortunate that I wasn't get able to get the horn to work. So I'll have to troubleshoot that for another day. But let me know down in the comments what you think so far. How are you liking the build so far? What is something you would like to see with the little Civic? And maybe we can even make that happen. All right, guys, I've had some time to get acquainted with the new steering wheel setup, and I'm really happy to say that this is one of the most transformative things that we've done with the car so far. I just didn't realize what it's like to have a nice steering wheel in this <laughs> until I upgraded it to this one. So the Momo 350 millimeter steering wheel, the Monte Carlo in particular, feels like the perfect size for this car. I didn't want to go too small because you have to remember that this car has no power steering. And even though no power steering doesn't make that much of a difference when you're going at speed, but you know, in tight situations, if you're parking the car, having that extra little bit of a rotational, uh, whatever you want to call it, strength, is actually very helpful in a tight situations like that. And I even have the horn working, which is great. And uh, it's very cute. It'd be nice if it had a, a little bit more of an aggressive horn, but I mean, this is an economy car at the end of the day. And to operate the quick release, I guess we can take a moment just to show you guys how that all works. The 4.0, a quick release from NRG actually comes with these little wings that are detachable. So it's completely up to you. They actually give you a little bit more leverage when you pull back here. But in this case, just for the aesthetics, I kind of like the, the clean look of not having those little uh, wings on the side. And it really is just the focal point more on the steering wheel. So all you got to do is you just pull this back and there's a there's a little button back here. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to pick it up on camera, but all you're needing to do really is just push down this button and then pull back. And you also want to make sure that you don't do that while it's really close to your face or else you're going to smack yourself. And uh, don't ask me how I know. But anyways, you're going to pull this back and you're going to hear that click. And now it's in the fully released position. So this is typically the position that it's going to be in once you have it off the, the quick release hub. And this is what it's going to look like and the adaptation of the short hub to the quick release adapter. Now, this is just to make contact so that the it's able to successfully ground when you're using the horn. But the unfortunate thing that I've noticed is that there's this little bit of this gap and it gives you almost a a full view into the ignition column. And that actually makes me a little bit more concerned because of course I don't want any uh, reason for this to get stolen. So the nice thing is 
if you have the quick lock, for example, somebody can't come in here and either take their own steering wheel and put it on and drive away with your car since they have easier access to the ignition. It doesn't give them the opportunity either to be able to use something like a vice grip. And that's something that's pretty prevalent uh, when people use these quick releases because it's a very popular product. A lot of people just have a, a quick release steering wheel like this just laying around. And if they're, you know, a thief, it makes it very easy for them to hop in and go. So something like this prevents all that to a certain extent. Yes, you could probably grab at the short hub itself, but it just means more work. And at the end of the day, this is not to showcase something that's gonna be a 100% theft proof thing, because I just think in reality that 100% theft proof really isn't you know something that you could say with confidence, because no matter what, if somebody really wants to steal something from your car, they're gonna do it. But if you make it as difficult as possible for the thief, the best you can do is just be hopeful that they will be deterred by that. So anyways, the way that this works is this actually rotates um, based on this little ball bearing that's in the middle and it will protrude out to a certain degree and then that will be the reason why you'll be able to lock this in. So when you install this on, it goes on like so and you're, you're gonna know that it's on there when it fits flush. And then now you'll have the ability to turn this from the left to the right. And what you wanna do is you wanna turn this to the right, which will move the ball bearing inside and it will seat against the hub adapter itself, as you see with these little grooves on the side. So once we do that here, we put it on, turn it all the way to the right, and you should be able to press down the button and then this will spin freely. And the reason it's spinning freely is because it's giving the opportunity for a thief to not be able to turn this with anything. So it does help a lot. And uh, this is something that I've been doing. And uh, the nice thing is too, you can take your steering wheel with you. You don't have to worry about it. And it just adds a whole nother element to be able to make your car at least a little bit less appetizing for a thief to just come in here. Because even if you have the more traditional steering lock, just like what I learned with my Subaru Impreza, that doesn't stop thieves, man. And especially the one that stole my Subaru in particular, he was a lock picking master. He picked the lock on the door lock, he picked the lock on the steering lock, and then he picked the lock on the ignition. So it was very clean, it was very calculated, and you know that's just a higher level thief. But I've seen at the auctions, you know, uh, I'm going there constantly and I see crazy things where people will just cut the steering wheel into pieces. Like what they'll do is they'll take some sort of saw and they'll, they'll cut here so that they're able to take the steering wheel lock off itself. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy what people will do if they really want to steal something, right? So what's nice too is it has this very unique key that is uh, specifically made for your quick lock and you should be able to put it in there, rotate this to the left and boom, you have it out. So this is probably the most focal point of this because I feel like the whole process for installing a quick release wheel has been well documented all over the internet, especially on YouTube. So I'm definitely not the first person to do this, but at least you guys are getting my full take on this. Now, before I set off and start driving this car, I did want to take a moment just to talk about installing the horn and making it work on an old Honda. So this may be different depending on which make and model you have, but I would say that the whole process itself is relatively similar. So anything from maybe like the late 80s to early 2000s, it's relatively similar. So once you put this short hub on here, you're actually gonna be getting rid of the original clock spring. And that has all the plugs that are gonna be for your horn, the SRS system, and most importantly, the airbag. And the one that you're gonna be looking for is the one plug that only has one wire going to it. It should be a gray plug. And uh, sometimes it's brown, sometimes it's blue. And I believe on this car, it was actually blue. So to make your life a lot easier, you can just uh, snip it at the plug and you'll be able to have that adaptation so that all you'd have to do is just make that wire a little bit longer by splicing in and using a butt connector. And then what I did is I just wanted to make sure that I have a connection that's going to the back portion of this short hub because it's actually a conductive material on the back of the hub. So if you get something from a hardware store, like a small piece of uh, brass, which is what I used, a little tiny strip of brass, uh, pilot a hole, and then uh, use that screw as a placeholder for the wire itself so that it makes contact constantly with the back of the hub. 
in a way that it doesn't damage the back of the short hub as well. If you guys are looking for more information on that, maybe I can make that into a video. I know that everything is kind of connected up here right now and it'd probably be a lot easier if I just took a couple of these screws out and were able to show you that, but maybe I'll have to save that for another video. Because at the end of the day, I do want to get behind the wheel of this thing and show you guys the driving experience now. I am planning on taking this car to autocross, which I'll make sure to document too into a different video. But I think for now, we can at least uh, just take this for a little light cruise, maybe do some spirited driving, and then you guys can get an idea of what it's like to drive. And maybe this is something of interest that you'd also want to put on your car. So the way to put the steering wheel on is you actually don't want to put it on directly, but you want to start with the you know, like in an angle like this, and you go all the way to the right, and then it locks in. Now, I know a lot of people are probably gonna be wondering why it doesn't make the ding, and that's just because this is a new hub. And the reason why it doesn't make the ding is because this is a new quick release. So with the new quick release, you don't have to worry about that too much. And the reason that it makes the ding actually is just because the ball bearings get worn out and they get loose over time and that's what causes the ding. So if you have a brand new quick release and it's not and it's making the ding, that's actually a little bit more concerning. I think the quick release 2.0s, they're like famously known for making the ding. You know, it, it's cool, it's kind of a novelty, but it's also a little bit goofy at the same time. I think just, if you are if you just want it to be secure at the end of the day, I think it's better without the ding, but that's just my personal opinion. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. Fires right up. Now the unfortunate thing is, I think the AC compressor is on its way out. It's making some, uh, unhappy noises to say the least. And uh, I, you know, it's, it's just a matter of replacing it. But since it's so cold here during this time of year, I don't know if it's completely necessary to do something like that right now. I think it's just something on the to-do list. Heck, I could probably even just cut the belt off. It's like $8 for the belt. But I mean, watch, I make this turn in here and it's just, it just feels so good. Before I, I would have to like really squeeze the wheel and again, too, with the seats, it, it's just such a different driving experience. I mean, the power output is, is pretty much the same. There's a little bit more induction noise, but just from being able to feel planted, this is the way to go for sure. It, it feels so much more like I, I feel confident going into the corner rather than like I'm hanging on for dear life. And I think especially once I take this thing to the track, we'll be able to really dial that in and we'll get back on this back road here. And with no power steering, not a biggie, because the car is so light. And once you get it up to speed, it's all that really matters, really. And uh, man, I've done this road so many times. This corner right here, I know for a fact, it's tight. You will see right here? Boom. No problem. Yeah, sweet little thing, isn't it? So I would say overall, if you're in a situation where your steering wheel just feels really worn out or it just doesn't feel right for the car, heck, even sometimes the, it's just like a wrong size or design, that going with something like this, like a Momo wheel is, is definitely really nice. You could probably even go on the lower end too if you wanted to do this more on a budget side with like an NRG uh, steering wheel, which they also offer as well. And they look to be in pretty nice quality too, but I haven't used an NRG wheel ever since like high school maybe it's been a very long time the momo though you're definitely getting what you pay for the quality is there if it just feels so good and i'm glad that i went with leather even though the suede slash alcantara was was very enticing uh, it looks beautiful but i just think with the upkeep and the fact that i like to drive this on the streets and i don't want to be constantly wearing gloves or cleaning it the leather is the way to go it's it looks great all the time. It's easy to clean up. You can even just use like a leather conditioning wipe and you should be in business. It's funny how when I drive this car, I have to remind myself of where this car came from. And yes, I know this isn't the most high specced out car in the world, but just the story behind it so far has been so captivating to me at least to be able to put this car back together. And just even the fact that I get to take it to track days makes me feel really grateful. And uh, I feel very fortunate that it hasn't given me any major mechanical issues. 
I am actually due for an oil change. Like, that's how much I've been driving it, you know? This is not just something that, like, sits on the side while I tinker with it and then do nothing after that. I constantly drive this car because I genuinely enjoy it. I do definitely think that there is some Honda magic with these old Civics that is just really hard to put into words without, you know, you having to go out there and drive one. So just to give you guys kind of a sneak peek of what we got going on with this one, I'm actually gonna be working with uh, Blocks Racing on doing some suspension upgrades in the rear, as well as I believe uh, True Heart, we're gonna do some uh, chassis reinforcement in the rear. So that'll be like rear, uh, rear bracing, as well as uh, sway bars, upgrading both of the lower control arms, camber kits, uh, pretty much everything to dial in the suspension and give us a little bit more tunability. And then that will put this car to the test, especially when we take it to the track. Because I, before I think we'd do any sort of uh, engine swap or, you know, change in from nationally aspirated to maybe boosted, there needs to be at least a little bit more emphasis on just seeing what we can uh, dial in here in terms of the suspension upgrades that happen with this one. So I'm kind of torn between either uh, turboing the D-Series in this. I saw that Max Speeding Rods actually makes a turbo kit and I was gonna reach back out to them because we uh, worked with them a little bit ago on doing the Max Speeding Rod coilovers that are currently in this car. And uh, if they give us the green light and being able to make some sort of collaboration with us to do a turbo in the Civic, I could be into that. But I just don't think that it's gonna be a plug and play solution. It might require a little bit uh, further fabrication on this and sorry this road is just so congested today usually I I can go through here with no problem but yeah so that's kind of where my head's at a uh, d-series content I think that you know boosting this before going over to something like a K series through hybrid racing would be the way to go but so many things up in the air I'm not uh, marrying myself to one idea and I do also wanna make sure that it's something that's enjoyable, not just for me, but for you guys as well. So maybe this could be a place for you to, you know, chime off your opinions of what we should do with this. I also did notice too that the brakes in this car uh, definitely need to be upgraded. I think, especially at the track, they, they get hot and it feels like you're pressing down on a piece of cheese once they get to a certain threshold. So it has drums in the rear, of course, because this is a DX model. The, you know, the, the hatches didn't have the pleasure of getting the EX, but the nice thing is you can upgrade uh, pretty much anything from a Civic EX onto a DX, and that will give you the ability to run stuff like the brakes off of an EX. But the only unfortunate thing that I'm dealing with is that solution wouldn't let me run the current wheel and tire setup that I have right now without making some further modifications. So for 14 inch wheels, I don't know if they would clear with the upgraded EX uh, rotors and calipers. You might have to shave down the caliper. And uh, I know also that Blocks Racing has a tuner, big brake kit that could be also a viable solution as well. But I mean, for now, just cruising around in this thing, We'll give it the beans, see what it got. <laughs> oh man, this thing's fun. And I'm not going fast at all. But just the sensory overload of the engine working so hard just to give every little horsepower it's got is very satisfying. It's a different form of gratification, right? It's not like when you're going in a four or five, 600 horsepower car where you have to be going at mind boggling speeds to really get that gratification. You can get that gratification at low speeds in this and have fun with it. And it, it makes you a better driver too at the end of the day, especially when you're able to drive slow like an autocross course, I feel like there's more to be learned there instead of when you're just going blisteringly fast. and. The car is just kind of set up for you to, you know, just be there as a, as a passenger in all of it. So I guess we'll leave it there. I do really appreciate you guys checking out today's video. I hope that you learned something from this. And if you're looking to do a steering wheel in your car, that this could be a good way to, to do this installation for you as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.